Today on Blue 58, we're all about playing time, specifically how much Aaron Rodgers should play, if at all, and what we can learn from how much other people are playing, or perhaps not playing. Blue 58! Hello and welcome to another episode of Blue 58, the one and only podcast to thepowersweep.com. I'm your host, John Meerdink, happy to be with you here yet again for another episode. I'm excited for preseason game number three. I'm excited to see what we learn after three games in this preseason, because as we talked about last week, it doesn't seem like we've learned all that much about this team yet, but there is always hope on the horizon that the more stuff you get on tape, the more stuff we get to see, the more we can learn about the team. And I think we're getting to that point where we may start learning some interesting things. A not interesting thing is the debate over how Aaron Rodgers should approach the preseason, or more specifically, how Matt LaFleur should approach the preseason with Aaron Rodgers. This is a debate that we need to kind of have anyway. We need to dig down into what we're really asking here, because since Tom Silverstein started this debate this week, there's really been no satisfactory answer, and I think that's because we're asking the wrong questions about the problem. It is a problem when you're not playing players in the preseason. How big a problem, I think, is open for debate, and that's probably a big reason for the range of opinions that are out there. Nobody really knows how much a guy should be playing in the preseason. Coaches will always say they want guys to play more. They want more practice time with players. They want to get those reps out there. And aside from an injury, there's really no downside for them getting more playing time. And of course, an injury is pretty significant downside, but coaches try to get guys out there. There is some variation even within that school, though. Matt LaFleur says he approaches the preseason with uh, from ve- for veterans as kind of a punishment. If you uh, screw up in practice, you're, you're goofing off or whatever, you have to play more in the preseason. If you're uh, a younger player and you're looking for more reps, getting held out of those preseason games is is a punishment. Players generally say they don't need the preseason at all. They, they don't want to play any games. They say they could just go into week one and be ready to go. And a lot of them will point to the 2011 preseason as evidence for that. Because of the, the strike or the, the lockout, whatever that, that offseason, the labor dispute, there wasn't much of a preseason at all. And you pretty much just went right into week one football and things were largely, largely fine. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Preseason games may be a necessary evil. And I, I would caution players for all the advice that they would take from me uh, against pushing too hard against eliminating those games. Because if you start getting rid of those games, you know what's going to happen? They're going to add them back into the regular season. So maybe just tolerate the preseason games for now. Try to get through them without getting hurt and get to the regular season. Because those games are not going away entirely. They will show up somewhere else. To the point of Aaron Rodgers, though, should he play in the preseason or not? I think to really get to the bottom of that question, you have to change a little bit. First, how much should he play? It's the question that you're really asking because it, it, it's all on a spectrum. Uh, should he play every single snap in the preseason? No. Should he play zero snaps in the preseason? Probably not also. But what exactly is the right number for him to play? To get to the bottom of that, I think we have to ask three questions. First, what are you trying to accomplish with preseason reps? Secondly, how many reps will it take to accomplish that? And third, will accomplishing that goal that you're shooting for with those preseason reps actually make any difference in the regular season? Because that's, that's the real important thing here. You're trying to get ready for the regular season. Is what you're doing in the preseason actually helping with that? So the first question, what are they actually trying to accomplish with these preseason reps? Well, I think there are three things. First, Huddle operations, getting in and out of the huddle, trying to to make sure that you understand what it's like to get a play call in this new offensive system, relaying that to everybody in the huddle, then getting to the line of scrimmage. Second, checks at the line of scrimmage. You want to be able to read a defense, take a look at what's going on, check into and out of package plays that you have that Matt LaFleur has said is a big deal in his offense, more than audibling at the line. Those, those check plays, those canned plays that you can just switch into at the line, that takes some practice doing that at the line of scrimmage. And third, just playing off of each other, getting reps, being kind of uh, on the same page, understanding what it's like to to play with Aaron Rodgers or, or anybody at full speed in game situation. And so I think you have to wonder whether you can accomplish those things with preseason reps. I think those first two are, are real obvious. Uh, you can get in and out of the huddle. You practice stuff like that. And you can make checks at the line. That those are those are two big things. In fact, that first thing is so important that most teams actually devote a significant amount of practice to actually doing that 
uh, just in in normal practice, just those game operation type things. Every football team and sports team that I've been a part of, from junior high on up through college football, has practiced basic things like that. You practice how you're going to warm up. You practice how you get in and out of the huddle. You practice getting signs from the sideline. All those little things you need to practice. So going over that in a game is probably a good thing, but I don't think it takes that many reps. You, you get the idea pretty quickly, and these guys have played football for a long time. Same thing with those checks at the line of scrimmage. You're probably not going to get a whole lot of actual valuable stuff at the line in the preseason because, for one, teams are running vanilla defenses. You're not really showing a lot, and you're probably not doing all that much on offense either. Um, and for that matter, you're not going to play much even in a situation where, where your starters are playing a lot. Last year, through four games in the preseason, Aaron Rodgers only played seven snaps. Now, he had been in Mike McCarthy's offense for a thousand years, so there's not a lot of practice stuff that he hasn't done already. But still, he didn't take a lot of time to settle in in the preseason. The final thing, playing off each other, I'm not sure that you can really accomplish that in a few preseason reps, unless Aaron Rodgers or whoever is your starting quarterback is going to go out there and play 50, 75, 100 plays over four games or so. What kind of feel are you really going to get for playing with a guy in actual game situations? So I'm not sure you can accomplish that at all in the preseason anyway, because it takes too much time. The second question is, how many reps will it take to accomplish these things? Again, we kind of kind of answered that already. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to practice getting in and out of the huddle. It doesn't take a whole lot of time uh, to practice making line checks, though you do need to do it over a longer period of time so you can see different things from the defense. And third, it's probably going to take quite a bit of time to get used to playing with somebody at a specific speed, probably a game worth of snaps, I would guess. So that the final question then um, becomes the most important one. Will even accomplishing these goals, if they are accomplishable, if that's a word in the preseason, preseason actually make any difference week one? I tend to think not, because let's look at the Chicago Bears from 2018. There's a lot of, I think, good comparisons between the Bears of last year and the Packers of this year. They were going through a big change on offense. They had a lot of new personnel. They had a new coach. They were doing things differently on offense. They also had an, a newly revamped defense. They had been a good defense in 2017. They added some more pieces. They re- retained Kyle Fuller after the Packers made a run at him. They traded for Khalil Mack. You may have heard about that. It came up a couple times during the week one broadcast. They were not the team that they were going to become for 2018 in week one. Teams have these development cycles. They don't emerge into the the first part of the season fully formed. It takes some time, no matter how many preseason reps that you have. And I think that the chances are pretty good that the Packers are going to need some time to develop, no matter how much Aaron Rodgers or anybody else plays in the preseason. The quote-unquote real 2019 Green Bay Packers are probably not going to emerge until sometime around week five or week six or so. You just have to hope that they kind of settle in early, get uh, get through the early part of their schedule without going 0-4, or 0-5, something like that. And this is not unique to the Packers. Most teams in the NFL take a little while to settle in over the course of the season. That's why you see teams start hot and then fade off as other teams in their division kind of rally over the course of the year. This is why you see some contenders really start pretty slow But once they put everything together, they get to be, you know, the juggernauts you expect them to be. It's going to take some time for the Packers to get there. And I think that's going to be true no matter how much Aaron Rodgers ultimately plays in the preseason. Now, the back injury, such as it is, probably throws a little bit of a wrinkle into that entire plan. And I think you got to be careful with something like a back injury because those can linger for quite a while. We've seen a few offensive linemen in in Packers history and not in the not too distant past have their careers in Green Bay all but end because of back injuries. And I'm thinking, of course, of Josh Sitton, most notably. That was the big deal for him, just uh, dealing with that back injury over a course of uh, over the course of a couple seasons. It requires constant maintenance, constant monitoring, because if your back isn't right. It's hard for the, the rest of you to be any good either. If Aaron Rodgers is indeed dealing with a serious enough back injury to be held out of practice, that is that is concerning. I would question how big a deal it actually is just because this is the preseason. And uh, if it mattered, I think he'd be playing and I think he'd be practicing and things like that. I, I'm just not convinced that it's that big of a deal, especially given everything else that we've seen and talked about with how long it takes for these teams to come together. I'm not worried about it for right now. 
if he gets to week one and we're still talking about symptoms of this back tightness or whatever, then I think you have some cause to worry a little bit. But until that point, I think you just ride it out. Don't worry about the preseason reps all that much and just go into week one trying to do the best you can. If I can throw a prediction out there already for week one, I think it is probably going to be very similar to last year's game. Probably a tight game and it'd probably lean a little bit Chicago, if not uh, significantly towards Chicago right now, just because they are further along in their team development cycle than the Packers are. They're into year two of their new regime there. Now they have had some significant changes. Vic Fangio isn't there anymore. That's a big blow to them. But they're further along than the Packers are. I don't think there's any two ways about that. The Packers are still figuring a lot of things out on offense and on defense, and that'll probably show up in week one. As to the exact win-loss prediction, I don't know if I'm comfortable doing that right now. A lot of things can happen injury-wise between now and then. Khalil Mack and half the Bears defense could get hit by a bus tomorrow. We never know. But right now, it's it's probably a pretty safe bet that the Bears are going to be further along, better prepared for week one than the Packers, just because that's how NFL teams usually operate. So to put a bow on it, I'm not super worried about Aaron Rodgers playing time. I don't think you should be either, but we'll see. Things things could change with the, with that injury situation. Let's talk about playing time for some other players as well, uh, because reps are really the only way we can consistently measure who the coaching staff thinks is important and who they don't think is important. I've taken some time over the past couple of days to total up all the snap counts for every player who's appeared in a Packers game over the first two weeks of the preseason, and I think there are a couple things we can learn. First, let's th- let's ask, though, do snap counts actually mean anything? Like I mentioned up top, Matt LaFleur seems to think so, but he thinks a couple different things. For veterans, a lot of preseason snaps is kind of a punishment because they don't want to be out there. They know what they are as far as uh, their playing situation goes. They know what to expect. So for a guy like, say, a Kenny Clark or uh, a big free agent signing like Zadaria Smith. If they were out there playing 40, 50 snaps in a preseason game, it's probably because they were on Matt LaFleur or Mike Pettin's bad side a little bit. They do not want to be out there that much because they don't need that kind of work. And I think you'd be a little bit worried if uh, Kenny Clark was going out and playing 40 snaps in a preseason game. For the younger players, it's kind of a reward because you want more time to put stuff on tape, especially if you're in the bottom third of the roster. You want to be putting some reps out there so the coaching staff on your current team can see you, but also so the other 31 teams around the league can see you as well. So look at a guy like Alex Light or Hard Debeer. Uh, they've got more than 55 snaps apiece over two games. That's a lot of film out there for both the Packers and the other teams around the league to consider. DeBeer in particular, because he's probably like the 10th lineman on the Packers right now, despite having quite a few snaps on offense. Uh, he's He's got to be trying his best to make an impact around the league, uh, whether it's in Green Bay or elsewhere. I think there's also an aspect of giving guys – and a chance to to cut themselves. You want to prove what your thinking is about a guy before you decide to move on once and for all. A positive spin on that line might be saying, giving guys every opportunity to show exactly what they can do. Recent example of this is Quentin Rollins in 2018. Now, I think everybody knew going into last preseason that it was probably going to be a tough go for Quentin Rollins uh, to make the team. He was coming off a terrible injury, There were two new defensive backs in the cornerback group. He was athletically limited to start and, you know, coming off an Achilles injury, he was probably going to have some significant issues there, but he still played quite a bit early on in the preseason and he saw his playing time stay pretty consistent throughout most of the preseason as well. The Packers even gave him some burn at safety. And I think that was just giving him kind of every opportunity to show yeah, I just don't belong here anymore. I just can't get it done. But the Packers, you know, with their significant investment in him, wanted to make sure that they had everything right. And so they threw him out there for all that they could handle. All that having been said, what are the snap counts showing us this year? Well, let's start on offense and we'll go on defense. Two categories we want to talk about. Guys that are playing more than expected, guys that are playing less than expected. Here's the top 10 rundown for uh, for playing time on offense so far. Uh, Elton Jenkins leads the way for the Packers, followed by Cole Madison, then Darius Shepard, Alex Light, Lucas Patrick, Harard DeBeer, Justin McRae, Evan Bayless, Alan Lazard, and then Dexter Williams and Tim Boyle are tied with 49 snaps apiece. Jenkins is the high man with 75 snaps. Everyone else in there is between 49 and 75. 
The big surprise for me in that group, group playing more than expected, has to be Evan Bayless. You expect a lot of uh, uh, those linemen to get a lot of snaps. You expect guys who are kind of on roster bubbles to get a snap, uh, quite a few snaps. But Evan Bayless, powered largely in part by uh, 37 snaps in the first week of the preseason, is is right up there. In fact, he is second among non linemen in total snaps in the preseason. Only Darius Shepard has played more snaps among guys who are not offensive linemen uh, than Evan Bayless. What does this actually mean? I'm not sure, but the Packers do like Evan Bayless a lot. They signed him late in the season to to the practice squad, and they've kept him around uh, until now. There's something there uh, that they want to get a longer look at, and they're getting a longer look at it as well. Even in the second week of the preseason, um, he, he still played 18 snaps, And that's a a situation where you have Jimmy Graham out there. You have Mercedes Lewis out there. You have Bob Tanyan out there as well. Jay Sternberg is still not playing, obviously. But Bayless was was right out there with with 18 snaps, not too shabby. And so playing quite a bit. The flip side of that is uh, who's playing less than expected. And I think the name that jumps out here is Geronimo Allison. I would have expected a little bit more out of him than 21 snaps. Now, there's not... A lot to be concerned about here. I think this shows that uh, Geronimo Allison's roster spot is all but locked up because among the the big contributors, even, he still is on the lower end. Uh, through two preseason games, even David Bakhtiari and Brian Bulaga, who didn't play at all in the first week of the preseason, are, are right up there with uh, with Allison. He's played 21 snaps through two games. Uh, Bulaga, Lindsley, Bakhtiari, uh, Billy Turner, a bunch of other members, or all members of the starting offensive line have played 15 snaps, so not too far behind Allison. I don't think there's any negative connotations here. I don't think anybody's worried about Allison not making the roster, although I have seen that theory going around online a little bit. I, I wouldn't put a lot of stock into that because I think his, his spot is pretty well accounted for. He'll be at or near the top of the wide receiver depth chart especially uh, in the slot. That's where they seem to like him so far. Flipping over to defense, the guy who's played way more than I think uh, think I expected early on is Chandon Sullivan. He's number two in the top 10 right now. The top 10 currently led by Ty Summers, who's played 107 snaps through two games. Then you have Sullivan, Montrevious Adams, Natrell Jamerson, Kingsley Kiki, Will Redmond, Rashawn Gary, Kyler Fackrell, James Looney, and Curtis Bolton rounding out the top 10. Summers at the top with 107 snaps, Bolton at the the bottom of the top 10 with 59 so far. Sullivan, though, the big surprise here because I think he would have been like 6th or 7th on the expected cornerback depth chart. Uh, And he's played like he's going to, uh, at least in the short term, get a significant amount of exposure um, just so the Packers can figure out what they've got here. Rewinding way back to when they, they signed him, uh, here's just, I guess, a, a brief biographical sketch of his background. He's had a pretty good uh, vertical leap numbers, good broad jump numbers at his pro day. 5'10", 5'11", or so, 194 pounds, pretty good athlete overall, and he has been on an NFL roster before. He played 87 snaps on defense for the Philadelphia Eagles last year and 53 snaps on special teams, though he did not record a special teams tackle. And just because it's a fun anecdote, uh, he was a finalist for the William V. Campbell Trophy in Division I football as a senior, considered the academic Heisman, had a 3.84 college GPA, and was a journalism major. And that is a real major. A lot of these guys in in, uh, in college kind of take the general studies or um, professional football type major. You know the majors I'm talking about, the, the ones that are obviously just, okay, you're here to play football, which is fine. They're not there to major in, uh, they didn't get a scholarship for school, they got a scholarship for football. So if you take kind of those less demanding majors, that is that is fine with me. But Sullivan right up near the top there and with 98 snaps is second among all defensive players in the preseason. I think that has to bode pretty well for his roster chances. And I think, uh, think he would have to be pretty, feel pretty good about, uh, about the snaps that he's gotten so far. Who's playing less than expected, though? This, for me, is Reggie Gilbert. He's all the way down at 20th among total snaps with 43. And for a guy who has just a, a small, small path to the roster beside or behind Zadarius Smith, Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary, Kyler Fackrell, I think you have to be a little bit concerned when you're playing 21 fewer snaps than Kyler Fackrell. I mean, he played less than half as many snaps as Fackrell in preseason game number two. 
Fackel had 31 preseason snaps last week. Uh, uh, Gilbert had just 14. Now, this could mean that the Packers have already decided what they think about Gilbert and they aren't super worried about him and they, they're just going to round him into the roster anyway. Or that uh, they've already decided negatively. Like, eh, we don't need to see anything more from you, Mr. Gilbert. Sorry, you're going to be on the outside looking in. Um, I I was wondering last week aloud whether, whether Fackrell might be on the way out just because they've seen all they need to see from him. That certainly still is in play, but he has 21 more snaps than Gilbert so far in the preseason. And he wanted, you do want to avoid reading too much into this, so we, this could all be smoke and mirrors anyway. But we'll update again after this upcoming preseason game and see where we stand. So I've got for you on this episode, and instead of doing the entire long spiel that I typically do at the end of an episode, I just want to take a moment to, to point out the great store we have for t-shirts and sweatshirts and other apparel-related things. Click the shop link at thepowersweep.com, and that will take you to our Teespring store. What a great way to outfit yourself uh, for another regular season of Packers football. Um, you look good. These are high-quality shirts and sweatshirts. I've got one, uh, a t-shirt that I wear a lot, probably too often. In fact, it's got a little bit of extra decoration right now, courtesy of the new co-host for the podcast. But uh, they, they hold up really well. They're soft. They're comfortable. They You, you can get a nice athletic fit. It's, it's good-looking stuff. So uh, give that a look. And remember, that does uh, that does help support the show and supporting the show and the the site helps us continue our mission of helping everybody become smarter Packers fans. And as I always say, smarter Packers fans are better Packers fans and better Packers fans are what we all want to be. I'm your host, John Meerdink. We will see you next time on Blue 58.